CJ Kaltenbach here of FantasyCruncher.com with your week 14 tight ends and defense preview video. Just like all the other ones, please subscribe, like, and leave in the comments section with your Fantasy Cruncher username. Let's go with the tight end. There's a bunch of good tight ends this week. The tight end that scores the most fantasy points. And you'll be entered in a drawing to win a free week of Fantasy Cruncher Pro. We'll, we'll announce the winner of that drawing. We combine them all across all the videos. So if you enter every every video, you got four chances to win. We'll announce that on the Monday video. And uh, you'll be able to know Monday video. Did I say Monday video? I meant quarterback video. Anyways, whatever. First video of the week. Watch them all. Then you can find out who won, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to the tight ends and defense here. You know, last week we talked about it, it was a pretty weak position, and this week it's kind of the opposite here. Uh, Travis Kelsey, 6,200 against the Patriots. Fantastic matchup uh, for him. You know, they not really don't beat the Patriots deep on the corner, so over the middle of the football field is where you can attack them. He's been getting a bunch of targets. I think he gets some red zone looks here. 6,200. Cheapest price we've had on Kelsey in a long time. Austin Hooper uh, resumed practice Monday. I, I would be stunned if he isn't playing this week. He's a fantastic option at 6,000. Uh, really good tight end, good Carolina defense. But again, you can tack them over the middle. George Kittle, more of the same story. On the road, New Orleans, going to need to be throwing the ball over the middle of the football field. Darren Waller in the first game with Hunter Renfro. We saw his targets jump right back up. Nine targets, seven receptions, 100 yards. Didn't get in the end zone, but a much better spot to do so against Tennessee that gives up the fifth most points in the last month to opposing tight ends. Kyle Rudolph, you know, it's funny. Rudolph just keeps catching touchdowns, man. That, that's five and four weeks, and uh, he's been the red zone threat with that Adam Thielen. He's been open on all these plays, too. It's not like it's just random. He's been wide open on all the plays. So he's an option at 4,400. Um, where is the most obvious tight end in the world, though? Uh... What am I missing here? Oh, there's Jack Doyle. 4,600. He's right there. I missed him. I was like, where's Jack Doyle? 11 targets with no Eric Ebron and, and uh, T.Y. Ty, Ty, Ty Hilton last week. Look, it's Tampa. You, you, you throw on Tampa. You just throw on Tampa. Um, the DVP in the last month isn't great, but they haven't faced a tight end in the last month. Like, you just know you beat them over the air. So Jack Doyle will get targets. He, he's a fantastic option as well. So, I mean, that's already like five or six tight ends. That are very playable. And then Ryan Griffin, you know, more of the same. Uh, got seven targets last week. First week he didn't get in the end zone. But, you know, five, seven targets for a 4,100 tight end. Very solid. It's still another tight end one. Mike Isicki has been getting a ton of targets uh, lately. Ever since Preston Williams went down, 6 6, six seven, seven, uh, Finally caught some touchdowns. Looked good. I expect him to keep emerging. And the Jets are, are above average matchup for tight ends. So it goes. The list goes on and on and on. I mean, you know, if T.J. Hawkinson can play, oh, he puts him on injured reserve. Well, okay. Remember, remember last week in the in the in the video, I talked about Logan Thomas. He he's firmly right back in. He's still that receiving tight end they got. He's twenty six hundred. Um, they're not they're not projected to score a ton of points here, but again, he he's a fantastic option. Um, didn't catch any balls last week, but he's still a fantastic option. Uh, since it's resigned, yeah. So I think he's an option. He's definitely their receiving tight end. So again, we've got about eight to nine tight ends I think are very viable. And of course, if Austin Hooper for some reason doesn't play, Jaden Graham, uh, still very playable. He, he had a career high four targets last week and a touchdown. So again, there's a, fan, a lot of tight end options this week. Last week, we were talking about two or three. This week, I think you could play eight or nine. Now, I'm still not recommending you play two tight ends. And oh, I didn't even mention Vance McDonald. Remember, flow chart. Arizona gives up tight end touchdowns to everyone. Doesn't matter how bad you are. Even OJ Howard caught one. So again, you know, it's definitely a situation where I think there's a ton of really good tight ends this week. So you know, if you had to ask me for the top five right now, Darren Waller one, Kelsey two, actually no, Jack Doyle two, Kelsey three, Rudolph four, and Vance McDonald five. But I mean, uh, Griffin, Gasecki. Hooper, Kittle, like there's just so many elite receipt, or tight ends this week. So definitely going to be a week to kind of check the news, uh, see who's active, see who's inactive, see if we can try to figure out if who's got a little bit of a slight bad matchup. Because I think t a lot of matchups are going to be won and lost in tight end this week. Don't think this is going to be a week where only one of these guys does well. I think you're going to get a couple that do pretty well. So you're going to have to find one. Defense. The Packers are the mega chalk this week. Redskins offense 
looked good last week, and I still think Dwayne Haskins is definitely improving. The protection's been better. But, I mean, it's Green Bay in December. I'm not exactly hopeful for him. I'm not sure I'm going to pay all the way up to 4K, but I think they're the top option. Lions with David Blaw, I think, are going to be good against the Vikings. Vikings' past secondary is bad. I'm not really high on them. I think the Browns against Cincinnati is a good spot. Cincinnati coming off their first win. I think you can expect a little bit of a letdown against Cleveland. I think that's a good spot. Houston against Denver, I think, is going to be the super chalk here. 3,300. Drew Locke, first road start. I mentioned last week I like Drew Locke. I think he's a talented kid, but first road start in that loud Houston stadium. They need this win. I, I don't like that spot at all for him. Pass rush was much better against the Patriots than we had seen in, in past weeks here from this Texans defense. Uh, how many sacks did they end up with? Ended up with three sacks. Uh, I know they ended up giving up a bunch of yards in garbage time, but I, I'm pretty high on the Texans this week. And then after that, it kind of gets interesting. Like, Buffalo against Baltimore, I don't think is the craziest idea in the world. I don't think ba- Baltimore at Buffalo is the craziest idea in the world. Obviously, good defense, tough weather to play in. Real question is, though, how many turnovers are they going to generate if there's not a ton of passing? You know, the Bucks defense showed up last week with, for the first time in a long time. Well, two weeks in a row, actually, they got two defensive touchdowns. I didn't even remember that defensive touchdown against Atlanta. Not sure that continues, but I think they can definitely keep up the pressure. Their D line's pretty good. Jaguars, or the Colts O-line hasn't been that great lately. So there, there's a few that I like. I think Texans is clearly the best one, though. I, if you have to ask me rank rankings right now, Texans defense is definitely number one. After that, it gets pretty interesting. i probably go with Cleveland number two. Might go with the... Uh, it gets pretty tough here after that. I'm going to go with Baltimore 3, Bills 4. And let's go with... A team we didn't talk about, the Saints. You know, the 49ers on the road haven't been the same offense. Um, I don't think that Jimmy G is going to be able to get the protection in that loud dome. So give me the Saints number 5. But I think this is definitely another week where you don't want to be as spread out as you might think in defense. I think you're going to want to target three or four specific defenses. Or if you're playing not 150, try to cut that down even two or three defenses. I I don't think there's a ton of great options. As I mentioned, there's a bunch of high totals this week. A lot of competitive football games. Not a ton of blowouts on the docket. So I think you're going to have to find that defense that can generate pressure and get those turnovers. And those five defenses, as I mentioned, I think have the best opportunity to do that. All right, again, really appreciate you checking out the tight end and defense video. If you haven't watched the wide receiver, running backs, or quarterback videos, go ahead and do so. Plus, you get some extra chances to win the free Fantasy Cruncher Pro weekly subscription. To win, leave in the comments section with the tight end you think scores the most points with your Fantasy Cruncher username, and we'll draw the winner during the quarterback video. Just like that. Wow, week 14 videos, all done. I can't believe it's almost, it's already week 14, incredible. We've got three more regular season weeks, so keep on coming back here to the Fantasy Cruncher YouTube channel. If you want more information, more content, FantasyCruncher.com. All of our content's free over there, so check it out. Uh, we've got our, an awesome optimizer as well. We've got an amazing Discord chat, so come check us out, FantasyCruncher.com, if you haven't already done so. And with that, guys, we'll see you in week, we'll see you in week 15.